So hello and welcome to today's Business Spotlight. Today's guest is John O'Grady from Perfect Reception Limited. John, hello, how are you? And welcome to the, to the Spotlight issue today. A very good time and thank you for having me. I love the background there. I'm very jealous that you have that kind of greenery to look over every day. It's good old County Carlo. I'm a Kilkenny um, man myself, but Carlo, Carlo is very nice, very nice county. Fantastic. Well, tell us, you're addressing a lot of uh, different people in our, in our community from all sorts of different backgrounds, different businesses. So let's tell them, what is it you do and how long have you been doing it? So I was, uh, I, I'm primarily, I have a hotel background. I was a hotel GM with the Prem Group. So I was in hotels overall for about 30 years. And mm. about three years ago, I was lured away by uh, uh, Jim McCoy, who was our, our CEO and founder and uh, lured away to, to manage a perfect reception on his behalf. So uh, my role is I'm the managing director of Perfect Reception. We primarily look after hospitality. We have 150 plus clients in Ireland and the UK and soon to deal with uh, hotels in Italy uh, uh, this summer. Wow. What we do is we support them in terms of communications and software. So we offer services like um, overflow calls. So for example, we've all had the, the problem. We've been trying to ring hotels. We can't get through. Time is short. So what we what we provide is a service where we act as a seamless extension of a hotel's front desk. So when you ring a, call, ring a, a hotel, after a certain period of time, it comes to us in our call center in Cork. We answer the call as the hotel. We can do reservations, food and beverage bookings, uh, spa bookings, whatever you may wish, whatever the client wants. And therefore, the customer just gets a seamless response always. Uh, nothing worse than ringing a hotel and you can't get through. Nothing more frustrating. So can I just ask, so if I was ringing a particular hotel and it was, it was, I wanted to check on the restaurant, I wanted to check on the rooms, I wanted to check on the spa, your people know everything about this and can actually act as an employee of the hotel. And give me yeah, but well, we, we, we act, we're like ambassadors for that hotel, I suppose, in a okay. sense. We, okay. we strive to offer exceptional service. Which So, you know, on the surface, the concept is very easy. Under the bonnet, it's not as easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, from my background, you know, I, I was probably 16 years as a GM. So I understand what people want. I understand the complexities of it. And we do a huge amount of staff training. So we provide the empathy. So just say you ring and you want to, you're proposing. We say, would you like a bottle of Prosecco? We're delighted to hear that. Or if it's say a, a, a more somber occasion, I'm very sorry to hear that. Yeah. Can we, you know, so you have to, you know, you have to have that. So empathy, yeah. Ab absolutely. So in a sense, we're like, we have to be as good, if not better as a front desk agent. Yes. Uh, and then obviously your, you know, every hotel is, is 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 different. So that makes the service a little bit more complicated because our approach is very holistic. So rather than me coming to you, Tom, and saying, look, we do a, a standard, a, an SOP manual, uh, this is the way we operate, and we're getting you to fit in with us. That's not that's that's not gonna work. So okay. we work to your spec because at the end of the day, we want you to become a client for the next 10 years, if not longer. So you take the long-term approach always and you work to always better yourself. You take any criticism in a constructive manner. It's always not nice to hear criticism, but it's, it's part, part of the course. But uh, yeah, so that's the business. We also do live chat, Tom, where we, it's not like a chat bot. It's, we, we we're rolling this out now to hotels, uh, uh, quite a number of hotels at the moment. So when you go onto a website and you click on the widget, uh, it's it's we offer live chats. You get to speak to a live operator fourteen hours a day, seven days a week. Mm. It's backed up by conversation AI, if you wish. After those times, so you know, the statistics shows that people visit thirty eight websites before making a booking. Wow. So this makes sure that when they come to your website, they can get asked the questions. And if they're having problems booking a room or are booking something on your website, we can do it for them. Most chatbots just redirect you to a booking engine. Yes. We don't do that. We'll actually take the reservations. So you make it more personal. Oh, no, absolutely. Now, we yeah, can't take yeah. the card details. We send you out a link from the hotel. But it means we can ring you back. Like, do you want us to call you back at a time convenient? So that's the sort of stuff we, we, we offer. Excellent. So, so tell us, obviously, the dreaded word COVID came along. What business changes were forced upon you, if any? Maybe it was good for you, was it? 
Well, we sort of had to pause for a second, uh, Tom. I yeah. mean, COVID, in a sense, took everybody by surprise. So, you know, I mean, look, hospitality got hit. Look, I'm not every business got hit, but hospitality got hit, hit the hardest because that was very much a business where you assume that people always had to eat, they always had to sleep, they always had to drink. So therefore, you know, my job is safe and all that. So look, we we didn't charge any hotels. We we provided the service free of charge. We did it because we're always promoting uh, longevity of customers and clients. Yeah. It wasn't really, I mean, a lot, you know, a lot of the calls that hotels would have missed would have been down to uh, staff shortages, would have been down to, you know, a number of, uh, of reasons. And obviously some uh, hotels did stay open, uh, you know, for, for certain segments of business. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, so we offer that service um, free of charge to all clients. And then it gave us an opportunity to relook at our, our business and do a bit of training with our current team and look at the service and how, how we could deliver a better service. Now, on the flip side, our retail business jumped. Um, in term, we've, we've a sister company called Complete Outsource Solutions. Uh, Complete Outsource Solutions looks after companies like Dunn Stores, uh, DPD, uh, Omniplex, uh, Airtricity. So those... Wow. those that, that business DPD and, and anything in retail jumped. So it was just really moving our resources in hospitality over to that over to that segment, you know. No, I don't look after that. Our yeah. CEO Jim McCoy, he oversees COS. Uh um and he, you know he oversees perfect reception. Yeah. He's 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 the gaffer at the end of the day. But Jim yeah. had the, the vision to see that. You know, it's not all bleak. There are opportunities even in COVID. So our business probably, mm -hmm. we doubled, you know, we, we were very, very wow. busy. Yeah, yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. So tell me, since you became the leader in your business then, what's the biggest learning that you say you've got being a business owner, becoming a business leader? Well, it was a learning for me, Tom, because I came into, our business is predominantly sales, obviously. So I was coming from a, a business that I was very comfortable in what I did, hotels and new hotels and set out to coming into a completely brand new business and going like, mm. okay, well, I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone. There are aspects to the business that I do understand and they're very similar, but there, there's a lot of aspects completely dissimilar to what I was doing previously. So yeah, I had to learn. I had to listen. Uh, God gave you two ears for a reason and uh, one mouth. <laughs> so you just had to listen to see what was going on and and yeah. But I very, very quickly, I adapted and, and very, very quickly, you know, it was just important to see what people wanted then and then, then to just adapt, adapt to suiting that. So we, we were like, you know, we had to change. I mean, you know, and I, I suppose like like in any business, you have to grasp the nettle, you have to change. So I suppose that was the big thing for me where there isn't a lot of change really in hospitality. Really, like, you know, there is in certain aspects of the business. Yeah. From a, from a senior management level, there isn't really. You're still dealing with the, the core issues. In this business, completely different. So I had to completely change my approach, my strategy, my 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 direction and control of the business. I had to be very, very open to change depending on what clients I came across. I had to be very open for change depending on the economic uncertainty that was out there. Uh, because, you know, when, when companies look at P&L accounts every month, they go through the lines, and uh, if it isn't completely uh, vital to the business, it's mm. like, okay, we don't need that. <laughs> so literally, uh, I've been at plenty of those meetings, Tom, yeah. uh, where, where you're going through all the, the, the figures and you're going through the fixed costs and the semi-fixed costs. So therefore, I, I do understand that. So we had to make our, our business essential in the sense that we were offering uh, incredible value for money. As well as delivering exceptional service, so that was really that 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 was really the big big challenge for us, you know. Excellent. So tell me, just as a quick aside, do you think customers today, in all your years in kind of hospitality, do you think they're more demanding? Okay. Well, I mean, I get asked this a, a lot. Yeah. I suppose Tom, you'll go to the bank uh, back in the day when there was just cashiers and other own machines, mm -hmm. and you will quite patiently you will stand there for half an hour in a, in a queue of twenty. But no you choice. walk to the bar counter for five minutes waiting for a cup of coffee. And that's the challenge we have. Uh, so, look, that's always been the way it is, because I, I suppose when you're in a bank, you're either you're neither hungry or thirsty or sleepy. So, you know, you're going to have to wait because it is what it is in hotels. 
you're hungry, you're you're thirsty, you're sleepy, you're paying for a service. So look, we adapt like we're used to that. And I mean, you come across. Uh, I, I did my thesis in, in when I when I when I was in Shannon Hotel School on customer satisfaction. So yeah. I sort of looked into the whole study of it. So um, uh, as you know, certainly when I, when I was in Prem Group, we we we, um, we had uh, we used your services, and and I, I got to do a lot of disc profiling. So I got to yes. I got uh, got to read people very very much. So look, I mean, yeah. look, it is what it is. People are very very demanding in 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 hotels. So look, you just. Yeah. They're paying the wages, so you just you just do what you got to do. Absolutely. So tell us for the future of your business. What is what do you see it looking like? And also, can you just maybe give us um, our listeners an idea of what what type or size of business would be an ideal fit for you? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do we have to do for the future? Um, I suppose we have to creep. We have to keep on. We have to maintain what we're doing. What we're doing has to be good. Has to be excellent. You know, I mean, and the aspects of our business that are good have to be better. So we have to keep on looking at our business, modifying it, tweaking it. So we have employed a lot of personnel in terms of quality that check the quality. You know, I personally answer, I sorry, not answer, but I, I listen to a lot of calls every day. And it's not calls for hotels, it's with certain agents, new agents, you know, existing agents. We we've different hotels, want different things. So just ensuring quality. Quality is very, very important. Do, do not sit in your laurels. And every every hotel has diff, has a different sort of, um, I suppose, it has a different mission statement. How they how they want their guests. The, you know, it could be a numbers game, or it could be a quality game. It depends depends on on the, on the type of property. So we really have to look at our our company all the time in terms of quality delivery. We also have to look at the smart aspect of our business because. A lot of people in hospitality have left hospitality. They've gone to other companies purely for was better pay, better conditions. Mm -hmm. It suited their family. So that's the big problem in, in hospital. A lot of experienced personnel have left. And now the personnel coming in just aren't the same, don't have the same experience, but just don't have that sort of uh, traditional value. Background, yeah. Just yeah. don't have it. I mean, the, the way a GM... You know, would would meet you, and that's really made made you feel completely yes. uh, warm, and that you, that you felt one hundred percent safe, giving them your, your your custom. A lot of the, and I don't mean to be disrespectful to a lot of the young GMs out there; they just don't have it, and it's hard to train it. You either do it, or you either do it, you, ha you know, you either you know you do it, you don't type thing. You can sense the difference, I think. I don't know. It is. It is. It is yes. a bit, and it's yes. not their fault. It, it just. Yeah, yeah. It was different. I mean, when I was training in hotels back in the day, like we wore our morning suits during the day, we wore our dress suits in the evening. Yeah. It was all misters. It was completely different. And yeah. the level of service you were giving to customers was 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 you know, it was, it was just incredible, really. And nowadays yeah. it's more of a it's more commercial. Yeah. Uh, if you ask so if you asked a GM 20 years ago what EBITDA was, they yeah. probably thought it was an African country. I mean, <laughs> now it's you know, yeah. very honest, like we we, we yeah. looked Cost, we, we we chase turnover nowadays it's all about EBITDA and it's your, your percentage EBITDA of now of net revenue and I mean and even when I was in hotels in the last five years I became very very commercialized because it was all about the bottom line so we have to be sort of on the flip side we have to be thinking about these things in our in our business uh you know for them so the smart aspect is huge Tom because everything is changing uh you know you have things like mobile order and pay payment systems, uh, you know, and, and possibly down the line, there won't be any reception desk in, in, in hotels because yeah. certainly that's the move away in Europe. They're moving away from that. They're doing self-checking. Nevertheless, I think there'll be, there's always a certain demographic that will want to speak to someone. And so I don't think hotels, oh, yeah, yeah. But I think in terms of live chat, I mean, we have live chat. I think that's the way ahead. People want to go on to a website. They want to get the information. They want to go. Uh, they want it now. They want it instantaneously. Exactly. But they want the correct mm -hmm. information. They don't want to talk to a bot really because you can find that information on the website. You want to talk to someone like, what's the hotel? What's it really like? They don't want to look at the pictures that the management have posted in the 10 years, of eight, 10 years old. They want to see how the hotel actually looks. So people are more savvy. So we have yeah. to look at our business. And you've got the different demographics. I mean, for, for me, my, at my age, I'm over 40. I know you're surprised. 
But, uh, I am very surprised, Tom. Yeah. There you go. Uh, it's nice yeah. to talk to somebody. I can show a bit of empathy and you build that mm. trust level up and everything else. So, John, last question here. If somebody was interested in having a conversation with your business, what's the best way to get in touch with you? You can call me on my mobile. You, you probably put it on the bottom there. <laughs> um, you can uh, I can't, email, or, 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 email. You can email him. Uh, my, my email address is john at reception.ie. So that's an easy one. Yeah. Uh, and look, all our details are on our website, uh, www.reception.ie. So whatever <laughs> business, if you're non-hospitality, we can we can do whatever you want for you. So like as I say, the approach is very holistic, Tom. We'll adapt to your business and, and give you exceptional, exceptional customer service. John, from the lovely county of Carlo, the lovely weather behind you there. Thank you. Thank you, so you very much for having me, Tom. Spotlight. Have a great Paddy St. Paddy's weekend. I, I think I'll say Thank you. People oh, I'm working that. tomorrow. I'm working tomorrow. Busy day uh, tomorrow. Yeah, working tomorrow. Man. Get ready for the match. I hope by the time this gets out to our audience that Ireland will be the Grand Slam. Grand, Grand Slam champion. John, many thanks indeed. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye for now. Bye-bye.